Hey everyone, I'm on a journey to read the entire world, a book from every country on earth. The lazy bugger that I am, that's the best way to travel the world. I left Russia a few days ago and now I'm in France. Okay, let's get straight into our reading. Today I'll be talking about some amazing stories from this fantastic country. France is like a good wine with a very mature literary tradition and ideas that gave birth to liberté or liberalism, égalité or socialism, and fraternité or nationalism. That's a lot of isms coming from one country and one revolution. The Russian novelists we talked about in a previous video all learned a great deal from the French writers, so much so that you come across many French terms in their novels. This was to show off that they were serious novelists and also to distinguish themselves from the rest of Russia. The one thing that distinguishes the French from the rest of Europe is their free and critical thinking. Frankly speaking, every French person is an intellectual and critical thinking is a national pastime. How they manage to elect one president is beyond me. Okay, enough of me overgeneralizing a country of 70 million. Back to our reading. It was a really hard task to pick just a few stories. I have a deep love for the French style of writing that touches your sensitive parts. The Russian novels punch you in the face with their brutal, raw honesty and take you to dark alleyways of human psyche. The French novels, however, tickle your nostrils, trigger your taste buds, take you on a ride through memory lanes to your childhood. Our first choice is Madame Bovary by Gustave Flaubert. Published in 1856, Flaubert was a perfectionist. He spent seven years writing it. If Balzac was a writer with diarrhea, words flowed like a torrent, very natural, Flaubert, on the other hand, suffered from constipation. He managed to write only three novels compared to Balzac's millions. Maybe not millions, but Balzac wrote a lot. Okay, in Madame Bovary, Emma, the heroine of the novel, romantic at heart, marries a boring doctor. In search of some more excitement, she has an affair. And a few more. Then she gets into shopping. She buys a lot. She has more affairs. But after a while, they become dull, and the debt piles up. Well, we all know where this ends. Suicide. Flaubert wanted to dramatize how search for unicorns may nourish your inner dragons who will eat you alive. Emma's romantic fantasies destroyed her, only in the long term though, but in the short term she lived a glamorous life. Her downfall only came when she was a bit older, not the Emma who was still naive and romantic. Once we achieve our life's dream, we are no longer satisfied to stay there for long, maybe stay atop of Mount Everest for a few minutes or an hour, no more than that. You have to move on. We need newer summits to climb. Flaubert was a master with his word choices, sentences, and cinematic writing. One of my favorite scenes is when Emma and Rudolf, her lover, watch the agriculture fair through the window from inside the empty town hall. Rudolf's confession of his love to Emma and the speech by the local prefect are told simultaneously to create this cinematic moment as though the camera is panning from duo to the fair and back, contrasting a monotonous, formal speech with a romantic one. Flaubert cre it's an awesome moment in literature back in 1850s. Okay, now to our next choice. It's a short story called The Necklace by Flaubert's disciple Guy de Maupassant. Published in 1884, he was a master short storyteller with the realism of Chekhov and storytelling of O. Henry. His stories had surprise endings, often pessimistic. The necklace is about Matilde, who thinks her life doesn't reflect her true worth. I think we all do. Anyway, when she is invited to a ball, she borrows a diamond necklace from a friend to be more presentable. In the party, she has so much fun that she manages to lose the necklace. Buying a replacement costs her everything. Ten years of terrible hardship, poor living condition, endless hours of work to pay off the debt. Ten years later, when her friend sees her, she is barely recognizable. What happened? asks her friend. Matilda reveals the loss of the necklace and the miserable life that came after that. Here the story twists your heart. Her friend reveals that the original necklace was actually fake, only cost a few francs. So Matilda's pride leads to misery that is the moral of the story. Our next choice is a big one. It's In Search of Lost Time by Marcel Proust. Published over a period of 15 years, from 1913 to 1927. Proust had a miserable life while writing this, sick, lonely and extremely sensitive. He spent over 20 years writing and rewriting this. My first reaction was, this is terrible. I spent all that money to buy all six volumes. But then things began to change. First I smelled it. Then my taste buds began tingling. Then it was crawling all over me. The sensation was incredible. Triggers upon triggers. Completely involuntary. I started to walk with a bounce. Hit the table, smacked myself at the door. 
Okay, here comes the big question. What is it about? On the surface, it's about a man realizing that success, money, love don't last. So, decides to write. Very simple. Very similar to what Nietzsche argued. Art is the only thing that lasts. But this novel goes much, much deeper. It's about a young man, conveniently called Marcel, who realizes that he is going to die one day, just like every other human being. He is devastated. What does he do? In his desperation, he discovers something by accident that is so mundane yet so beautifully crafted as the answer to his existential question. What does he discover? He discovers the past, his past selves, the last time. But everyone knows this. Yet, the way he discovers is absolutely incredible and deep. The most famous scene is when he dips a madeleine into his tea and put it into his mouth, then the most incredible thing happens. The taste and smell that it triggers lead him to write a six-volume novel, which many consider to be the best novel ever. What the taste and smell trigger in Marcel is a past version of him. And that smell and taste, there was remnants of his past selves that he had forgotten. Now, before we go any further, I want to clarify one thing. There are two types of memory. Voluntary memory works like a computer or machine. You can retrieve a fact or a date by searching your memory. For instance, what I ate for lunch yesterday. Then there's involuntary memory. This is what distinguishes us from computers and robots. Involuntary memory is when you hear a piece of music, you're suddenly transported to a past that you've probably forgotten. Or a smell triggers a moment, a person, or food from your past, or touch that takes you to past experience. Okay, back to our story. When Marcel realizes that one day he will die, he also realizes that this new Marcel, who knows now about death, is in fact a different Marcel from the one who didn't realize death. The child, the teenager, and many more versions of this Marcel hadn't understood death. Now the current Marcel knows it fully. He's no longer the same person as his past versions. He has evolved. He applies Darwin's theory of evolution to his own life. How does this change happen? Why can't he stay the same person throughout his life? Here let's talk about the antagonist in this story. Who is the enemy? Rather, what is it? It's time. Time changes him. Time is slowly killing him. Time is the enemy in all our stories, and that's what Marcel is against. Since time divides you into a series of selves, you aren't the same person physically, mentally, experientially as 10 years ago, or last week, or even yesterday. Time changes you, makes you older, makes you fall out of love with someone, makes you forget things, people, experiences. Time makes you forget your past obsessions, pains, and pleasures, etc. Time controls you. You cannot stop changing. You are not free. There is no God back time. Earlier we talked about Madame Bovary's dream versus reality and how she got bored of things. Flaubert didn't or couldn't fully articulate this, but Proust does it amazingly well. It's time that turns you into pieces over a lifetime, and how each piece is different version of you. Now how do you piece yourself back together? How do you fight time? Marcel does it brilliantly. In that Madeleine, Marcel smells and tastes an entire childhood that he had lost, his mother, father, and millions of other characters from his past. The places he had been, the things he had seen, heard, smelled, touched, and tasted. He sees in this moment of involuntary memory, triggered by smell, touch, taste, or hearing, that transport you to a moment in the past. You exist in both in the past and also in the moment in the present. This is magical. This triggered memory allows you to travel in time. In that moment, time has no control over you. This allows you to reunite with your past self or selves. We all have these moments when we listen to music or smell food or taste something, we are suddenly transported into the past that allows us to be that person who experienced those senses at a different time and place in life. This is the only weapon we have against time, involuntary memory. For Marcel, life is a series of obsessions. You forget one, you start another one. Be it love, hobby, dream, taste in music, food or anything. You constantly move from one to another. This shows that you cannot be the same person with your past selves, who listened to a different kind of music, loved a different person, or read different kinds of books. Sometimes when we are reminded of those obsessions, you realize that you've changed. <sighs> All done. A quick summary of each book. Book 1 deals with childhood memories. Book 2, teenage miseries. Book 3, adulthood pretentiousness. Book 4, romantic follies. In book 5, midlife insecurities and jealousies. In book 6, realization of death and the thought of writing for legacy. It's a novel about what it means to be human, how to fight time, the biggest killer of all. Okay, now from Le Petit Madeleine to Le Petit Prince. Our final choice is The Little Prince. 
the most translated book ever by Antoine Saint-Superry. I hope that's right. Published in 1843, he was a poet, pilot, journalist, a man of many talents, and an aristocrat or a little prince in his own planet. His own life reads like a novel, full of twists and turns and mysteries. But that's for another occasion. The Little Prince, the most beloved story in France, tells the story of a little alien prince who visits Earth and meets our pilot narrator stranded in the Sahara Desert. The Little Prince tells his story of being in love with a rose, visiting six planets where he meets men who all do useless stuff, like ordering the sun to set at sunset, a drunkard who drinks to ease the pain of drinking, and so on. The narrator and the prince struggle in the desert for eight days. Then the prince talks to a snake who promises him of his return to his home planet and a reunion with his rose. He is bitten by the snake and the narrator watches the prince walk away and dying. The little prince is perhaps every child who see adults being a bunch of idiots, doing useless things like ordering others to do things, go to your room, do your homework, clean your room, or stand in front of the mirror every morning to admire themselves, or drink alcohol that make them miserable the next day, constantly chasing money without enjoying their time now. These made me think about how children see the world and how growing up is not really becoming wiser. When did I become adult? Or have I? I don't know the answer. Okay, to sum up, Emma chased happiness. Got some, but not a lot. Matilda suffered for her pride. Marcel somewhat succeeded to defeat time and live forever with his writing. And the little prince is the child that dies within every one of us when we become adults and do stupid things. But sadly, that's all from France. I hope you enjoyed this video. Join me again next time to smell another country. I mean, read another country on our journey to read the entire world. Thank you. Also, please send your suggestions and recommendations for books from your country. Thank you.